right, here's Gilbert Gottfried, who is miserable. Everyone I know who knows Gilbert through the grapevine says he is at the most miserable point in his life, and there is nothing funny going on. The day the comedy died is the day he knocked up. you are homo. Is the day he knocked up that chick. I don't hear the same stories you're hearing. I heard he got married and he's fucking ready to kill himself. I heard no, you got to switch it back. Go back. Yeah. Ah. I heard that he loves this whole situation. He's so into the baby. Yes. Uh, No. Where did you hear that? It's they planned it together. That's nice. And that he is the greatest. He is so into this. He can't wait for the baby. Weirdness. <laughs> who did you hear that from? I know somebody who knows the Mrs. Gilbert. Well, she's saying that. That's but her this story. Is, this is what she's telling people. I know people who work with Gilbert oh, really? who are saying Gilbert is like on the phone ready to hang himself. Every day. <laughs> Gilbert. Yeah. What's the real story here? You did get married, right? Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh. How was the ceremony? Was it a big wedding? <laughs> no, as small as possible. <laughs> yeah. Who was at the wedding? I have to ask you. Uh, Anyone from your family? Uh, yes. Sister? Yeah. That's it? And who else? Yeah. Friends? And then just some relatives of hers. A whole uh-huh. bunch of her yeah. relatives and your sister? Yeah. <laughs> How did she keep the helicopters from the paparazzi? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about your management like people? Were they there? The guy who runs your website. Uh, no, and... no, no, no. And Brooke, Brooke Shields wasn't there. And, yeah. Now, here's, I only heard sort of sketchy details. I heard Brooke Shields wasn't there. Yes. All but, of my Scientologists were there. <laughs> what was Will shocking. Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. What was, yeah, yes. What was shocking to me is that it was a traditional Jewish wedding, like under a chuppah. Oh, really? At, you, am I right or am I wrong? Oh, I got, yes. Yeah. Were you at the, like some uh, hotel oh, they, ballroom? They kind of thing? built it themselves, kind oh, really? of thing. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. 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 <laughs> Why did you have a? I mean, are you really Jewy? I mean, no. To, is your is your wife uh, Jewish? I, I mean, I, I shop at the ninety nine cent store, so that way I'm Jewy. But... No, but I mean, are, are, was you, no, you... no, I was never bar mitzvahed. And, and your wife is she a Jewess? Uh, well, I guess they can't avoid it. Uh, right. Yeah, so she's Jewish. So, was that important to you to be married? No, by not, a not at all. Not at all. Did you step on the glass and do yes. all that stuff? <laughs> wow. Oh, is there tape of it? <laughs> yeah, I wish. Can't we put that on Howard TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that. That that tape getting around would be bigger than uh, Pam Anderson's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> did you have a videographer for you to to record this moment? Uh, yeah. You did. It's it's it'll wind up somewhere in some porn store. Did you watch it? Did you and your wife? No, no, I have a hard time looking at. It. And did you wear a tuxedo or a suit? I actually wore a suit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Where'd you get the suit? Did you have to go to a tailor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, did you stand there and get measured and pick out the color and all that? I mean, you must have been out of your, your wife probably made you do did all you that. Did you wear the bow tie or was it a tie, a long tie? Do you know I didn't even wear a tie? That's oh, me wow. being a rebel. I see. Oh, yes. you, you, oh I see. Yeah, yeah. No tie. That, that's no me tie. being James Dean. You're in show business. Yeah. You don't need to wear a tie. Oh, yeah. You know, Gilbert's famous. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. He doesn't wear a tie. Yeah. And and uh, so you you go there, the rabbi, and was he a, a very Jewy rabbi or like uh, a... uh, no no actually it was her her aunt I think it was basically one of those like uh, you know for fifty dollars become uh, a, a rabbi yeah, yeah yeah become anything you want in the back of a magazine. rabbi minister yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you is it true what I hear that you're miserable, like you're freaking out, like it's almost like you had to marry her kind of thing, or you regret your decision? I I, I walk around miserable. I I don't know if I'm more miserable now than I ever did. Is it horrible sharing your apartment with another yeah. pregnant human <laughs> oh being? Oh my God! Wait till the baby yeah. comes. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know you're gonna are you gonna get help like someone to help you with the baby like to move in like a like a black woman or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now you gotta live with black people? Yeah, he's gonna be living with black people. <laughs> no, Dad. That, that's the worst part of this. He's been trying to avoid that all his life. Holy mackerel! <laughs> <laughs> Where's where, where yeah. Mr. Godfrey? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gilbert. Oh. Seriously, when is the baby coming? 
I I think June. I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know when it's yeah. going. You've been, yeah. I've heard you've been going to the appointments and, <laughs> oh, and, and, and uh, sitting birth? there during the sonograms <laughs> and the all the stuff. You've been doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that true? Wow. I, I went to one sonogram. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't do one every week. Are you excited at all about being a dad? I heard you were, like, flipping out. Like, this is something, I guess it was an accident or something, right? <laughs> no, it was planned. No, that's what the wife is saying. D- yeah. Tell him, Gilbert, that you and she <laughs> planned this. <laughs> <laughs> did you plan this, baby? Well, well, she did, certainly. Yeah. But you were in on it. She didn't just... Put Trick a you. hole in your condom. Yeah. <laughs> Are you flipping out? Which reminds me of an old uh, dirty joke. <laughs> do you know? That do Jackie you, probably hear, told. Let's hear it. <laughs> do you know the sex uh, of the baby? Uh yes. What do you have? I'll, I'll, I'll reveal that when it happens. Oh, really? It's a yeah. big secret. Yeah, <laughs> it'll gay. be a big secret. So, uh, entertainment tonight will follow me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, are you selling the pictures? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what would be worse. He was the father of a girl or a boy. <laughs> what would be worse? Oh, I either way, it's horrible. Uh, let's yeah. hope there's a new sex we can create. Yeah. Do you think this baby will, uh, in its teen years, will it socialize with Zahara Pitt <laughs> and shoot Sulu Pitt? <laughs> are you, I, I know you don't like your own looks. Are you afraid that the baby will not be good looking? <laughs> Imagine a little Gilbert walking around. Hopefully well, I life. always thought you look a little Asian. Do you have Asian blood in you? That's uh, George Takei. That's me, Mr. right Sewer. here. Oh, hi. hi. How, How are, are you? you? That was when very I scary. <laughs> when I first saw your photo, I thought yes. you, know, you, you were Asian. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> are you Asian? You, you, I've gotten that before. Yeah, you I'm do sure you have. I okay. One time I was walking down the street, <laughs> and, and a guy asked me for my autograph, and he thought I was that guy who ran the deli around from uh, David Letterman. Oh, Rupert. <laughs> yeah, the Rupert the he, deli guy. Yeah. <laughs> Who's decided. very Asian? Well, you still haven't answered the question. Do you have a little Asian blood in you? Uh, well, why are you offering? Would you like, <laughs> would you like a little would Asian in you? <laughs> would you like a little Asian blood in you? I would like to inject some Asian blood. In you. you know, uh, Gilbert, uh, George is honoring us all week by being our announcer, and uh, <laughs> he is out of the closet, as you know. Did you know he recently came out of the closet? Yes. Not so recently. Well, uh, a couple of years, two years. A couple of years. Three years. So. Yeah. So, Not out of, the, out of the closet. I talked to the press. Right. About, We've been out of the closet for a long time. Right. Gilbert, uh, I just didn't know if you knew that. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, some yeah. Asian blood can be arranged. Yeah. <laughs> for your baby. Can be put into me. Well, yeah, so these were the two I was mistaken. I was mistaken for that Rupert. Are you works- excited that you're going to have a baby? Uh, what? Are you excited? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, very. Because I've talked to you privately. You're, you're freaking out. And oh, and I, I just before I forget, I was mistaken for Mr. Moriaki from uh, <laughs> Pat Morita. Pat Morita. Right. One time, someone thought I was him. <laughs> Those were the two. Wow! I, uh, what an honor. Now, yeah. when you say you've talked to Gilbert privately, do you mean he called you on the phone? No, I mean I've talked to him when we leave the studio. I see. And I go, Gilbert, are you going to be okay? And, you know, and he's like, I don't know. Uh, 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 you think that's all real? His, yeah. His, uh... <laughs> Off the air, he's a different man now. He yeah. he is completely fogged out. He can't even concentrate. <laughs> he's so nervous. Is it weird sharing your apartment with the wife? Uh, yes, that's very weird. Did you go on a honeymoon? Uh, yeah. Oh, where'd you go? <laughs> Where did you go? Well, it was it was part of, I was already working in San Francisco. I thought you didn't pay for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Another one of those deals. You were going to do a comedy show in San Francisco? Oh, yeah. Was that what was going on? Oh, yeah. A, a club? Yeah. And so you said to your wife, come with me and that'll be our honeymoon? Uh, she said, I'll come along. We'll stay an extra couple of days. One um, of the biggest honeymoon destinations is the punchline in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Was <laughs> it romantic, your honeymoon at all? Or... Oh, yeah, can't you tell? <laughs> well, how, how pregnant was she at the time of the wedding? You still banging her, or you like, you don't bang her pregnant, no, no. do you? You turned off? <laughs> she's not good enough for him. Uh, she's pregnant. He's got the gumad uh, working full really? time, right? Really? <laughs> 
Did you have sex through the pregnancy at all? Uh, no. Nothing. As soon no, as she no. said she was pregnant, that yeah, was it? Yeah. I'm like Elvis Presley. <laughs> You're saying not even in, the, in that way. Not even in the first trimester? No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're t so you haven't had that kind of sex. You haven't even consummated your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't fucked her even. Well, thank you. Thank God. So even... I've got a loophole. <laughs> even on the wedding night, you didn't bang her? No. Oh, my God. Wow. So you, Robin's right. You haven't consummated the Yeah. Oh, so I could still get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could still be annulled at this point. Are you happy about this? Can you be real for a second? Are you happy about this, or are you still flipping out? I'm still flipping out. You are? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. How did this happen, Gilbert? I don't understand how it happens. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> yeah. What are your, what's your take on this, Artie? I, you know, I don't know what Robin's hearing because he clearly seems very uncomfortable with the entire thing. <laughs> I mean, I hope, uh, look, I hope he's happy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know. I you hope he participates in the baby's life. I, I think it would be better if he actually had Pat Morita or Rupert's money. <laughs> Do you have any sort of paternal feelings, like you want to cuddle the baby, or will you get up in the middle of the night and change a diaper? I mean, do you have any of those feelings? Uh, not so far. Right. Have you gone to, like, Lamaze class? I, I, think, I'm, thing. I think I'm going to be like, like Brooke Shields and, like, want to kill myself. Oh, you're going you're gonna to be postpartum depressed, huh? Yeah. He's already called me for advice on how to raise a kid. <laughs> have you ever well, taken... Well, when the baby's hungry, <laughs> you can give him a bottle. <laughs> and uh, if the baby has crap in its pants, it's usually Risable to change the diaper on him. He's <laughs> starting to sound like Georgie Jessel. Yeah, big voice. I was always here. <laughs> Have you ever taken care of anything or anyone? Have you ever done any I've big... always uh, enjoyed being a replacement for Jackie Modeling. <laughs> It's Have, you ever, it's had, just. Have you ever taken care of anyone? Have you ever had the opportunity to Have you changed for like a niece or nephew's diaper or no. any Or an stuff? uncle's diaper. <laughs> Boy, this smells disaster. <laughs> an uncle's diaper. Poor you. Uh, I think he kind of just got caught up yeah, in Yeah, this will be a reality show. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I met your wife. Is it weird? Have you called her like your wife? Do you say Have my you wife? said my wife? Yeah, I still haven't said it. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Do you know her name? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, when he walks around with her, it's like a stranger. He doesn't even introduce her? No. It's the weirdest thing. You run into Gilbert, and then like I'll say, hey, Gilbert. And he goes, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, Wait, not hello. And then, and then like the <laughs> wife is just standing next to him, and then I'll go, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Why won't you introduce her? Is it like you're almost in denial? You don't want, yeah. you want to be a hard ass or something? Yeah, it's like you introduced yourself to her and then Beth introduced herself to I her. I know. Why won't you introduce her to anyone? I don't know. You, have, you lack all social skills yes. and manners. Yes. Where were you raised? This ah. is crazy. I mean, you've got to acknowledge her in some way and make her your equal. Yes. Did you see her ring? I don't think so. No, I don't even know that there is. Is there a, is there a ring? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah. one of those you blow into it and it goes, <laughs> <laughs> Has she become Mrs. Gottfried? Has she changed her name to Gottfried? I think so, yes. She, you yes. think so? I, 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 I know it because I've seen it on letters. Oh, she now signs her name. What, what's your wife's first name? Uh, Dara. Dara. So yeah. it's now Dara, Dara Gottfried. Dara Gottfried. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what a, what a lucky woman. <laughs> So uh, do you like that she has your name, or, or does it creep you out? It's very strange. It's strange. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you like about her? or do <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Can you point, like, like, is there something that you fell in love with about her? <laughs> <laughs> She's edumacated. <laughs> She's got that book learning. <laughs> is there anything you love about her? That you could point to? I, I don't know. Nothing. Yeah. You never said the words. I mean, how do you get married? You never said the words, I love you. you don't, you're not romantic. Not not romantic at all. But you have said, I love you. Uh, yeah. You when, did. When, when pushed into it. Oh. Just not to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you love, Why do you... did you marry her? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question, Mr. Uh, Sulu. That is the question. <laughs>
<laughs> it's the I'm it's the little Asian in you speaking. <laughs> Why did you? Because you got her pregnant, right? <laughs> Well, many I, people I, get. Well, no, she pregnant. put she she put her foot down, and and I think they broke up at one point. From what I hear, like Gilbert will never confide in me, but I heard they broke up. I saw her at a party once a couple of years ago. They were done. Oh yeah. And I think Gilbert came back because she said, "Look, either you get serious about me or fuck you." Ah, <laughs> yeah. and so I guess that all was in the mix. We're getting married. We're having children. That's, that's what it means to take me back. That's my best guess. And believe me, there were guys hitting on her. She could get on. Of course. <laughs> I hear she's lovely. Lovely. I hit on her. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you haven't fucked her since you got married. That's yeah. weird. But everything's do weird. Do you think you'll do it after the baby's born? I, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. You're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a room all decorated for the baby? <laughs> you know, the Jews used to wait. They wait till the baby's yeah, born. Yeah, they don't buy anything. Do you yeah. buy? He's before? not going to buy anything after the baby is born. <laughs> <laughs> after the baby moves out. <laughs> no, do you have yes. a crib and do you have everything all set up? Yep. Yeah. You, you fixed up a nursery? Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> did that room used to be like your office or something and now it's gone? It was just some extra room there. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you know, they got a new place, so she probably already picked it out with a, oh. a nursery in mind. Oh. How many bedrooms you got? Three? Uh, yeah. 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 Do you touch her stomach to feel the movement of the baby? Talk to the baby with that funny voice of yours. Do you read stories to the baby? <laughs> this is bad. Or do you ever get sentimental like that? Do you no. Ever, you don't no. want to feel. Did you, you've never felt the baby kick? Or no. Anything? No. Never. No. You're not kidding, are you? No. You talk to the baby like a parent. What do you do, Gil? Uh, <laughs> did you? Do you ever touch your wife's stomach? Of course. Yeah. I was you excited. You gotta feel the baby wow. kick. Yeah. You never touched her stomach no. to feel the baby no. kick. That's amazing. It's almost like you want to act like the baby's not coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that his girlfriend just got fat. Right, right. Uh-oh, my bad news. I, I, know, I, was just, I was looking at uh, Gilbert's DVD. I was looking at the credits. You know that Dara and Gilbert are the executive producers oh. of the DVD. Oh. <laughs> wow, Gilbert. She's in the business? She is. She's in the music business. She is no, she's in Gilbert's yeah. business. Yeah, what? She, my is she guess a manager? Is, is she managing well, not, you? Not not uh, manager, but on that one, she like uh, sort of like found someone. Because I was always talking about, you know, I should just get something to sell at the shows finally. I see. And she finally helped put it together. Uh, I see. Yeah. Is I, she going to be more involved in Gilbert business? Well, Gilbert, you wrote the DVD and you yeah. you came up with all the material. <laughs> I mean, you paid for the money. Project. I mean, yeah. I don't know what she did. She yeah. probably, I, I, she probably helped figure out a way to get a package and distribute it, which is for she Gilbert made a difficult. Phone calls. Yeah. Hasn't she ever said to you, Gilbert, I want you to feel the baby, I want you to touch uh, the Yeah. And you just say, I'm not interested? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Does she feel hurt when you do that? I'm sure. Yeah. Are you going to be yeah. in the room when the baby is born? Uh, that I don't know yet. So it's a discussion. In yeah, other words, yeah. You've been invited. You just have yeah, not responded. Yeah. Can you imagine him standing there like a block of wood <laughs> while they're trying yeah. to get this baby out of this woman? Maybe that'll be the moment that'll make Gilbert yeah, he'll become bond a with the father, baby. Right? No, I, I cringe at those moments in every like sitcom or romantic comedy that has the birthing scene. What do you yeah. think it is? Are you not allowed to have anything good in your life? Are you not allowed to have any joy or emotion in your life? Is that what's going uh, on? May, maybe that is it. You feel you're being punished in some way? Maybe. Does she cry a lot, this woman you married, uh, uh, Dara? Uh, not, not so much in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> but she, in other words, when this woman turns to you and she says, I'm being serious now, yes, i got to yes, know this. Yes. She says, Gilbert, the baby's kicking. You've got to feel this. Yes. You'll just go no and storm out of the uh, room? Uh, not storm out, but I'll no and freeze up. Do you explain? You go, listen, I'm very uncomfortable touching you. Yeah. And the baby. <laughs> yes. Are Would you two sleeping in the same bed? <laughs> <laughs> That's Gilbert getting out of town. But are you two sleeping in the same bed? Uh, yeah. So sometimes... Gilbert has you... a big nightshirt on when he goes to bed in a, in a she, cap. Has she right. recommended therapy for you at all in any way yet? <laughs> oh, well, seriously. Oh, 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 sure. No, seriously. Has yes, she... yes. Are you doing it? No. No. <laughs> but I'm just wondering, I mean, because even when, you know, you're sleeping together, you know, sometimes you cuddle, yeah. you can feel the baby kick, or Gilbert do doesn't, you cuddle? Gilbert doesn't want to do therapy because it might ruin his personality. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if you got social graces? 
I, I might not be as good on shows like Celebrity Paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> might, might hurt my... Uh... You were the best one on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gilbert is going to be, even despite the fact that he's about to become well, a father... he better be working. He's going to be at Caroline's, 8 o'clock, on Broadway in Manhattan this Thursday. That's this week, this Thursday, That's, to see Gilbert. Yeah. And maybe his executive producer, Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Gilbert, and, you, will you be taken off the road, meaning as when you get into the ninth month, I know a lot of guys who travel a lot are grounded because they need to be close to the birth of the baby. No, I don't think any arrangements are made like that. Yeah. Have you said to her, look, I don't really want to care for a baby. I'll go out and make a living. You take care of this baby. Is that the arrangement? Is that the arrangement? I, I haven't said it, but who knows what will happen then. Right. Right. Well, you gotta You're just going to wait to see? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Let's see if he feels anything. <laughs> okay, but what happens if you really are like Brooke Shields and you... You see the baby and you hate the baby. <laughs> or, or what was that? Um, Postpartum. Uh, the girl who, uh, Marie Osmond. Right. She got in a car and she started driving across country. <laughs> Is there any chance you might leave town? I, I hadn't heard the Marie Osmond. Oh, but seriously. I see a lot of parallels with Gilbert and Marie Osmond. <laughs> What if you have the baby seriously, and you just look and you just go, I don't want this thing in my apartment. Yeah. I, I had a perfect life. I, I mean, uh, this is crazy. I, 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 it's too much for me. What are you gonna do? Yeah, build, like a person build a doghouse outside. <laughs> like a person who has a pet and they don't yes. like the responsibility. There's no pound to take the baby. What about you moving out of Manhattan, getting a house on Long Island? <laughs> oh. I see you in Westchester. Oh, Gilbert, he's got to find, is... find the right temple. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very exciting news. For yes, you. it's very exciting. Congratulations. I see Gilbert hey. cleaning gutters. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Gilbert's such an interesting character. Like, we've known him forever. And somebody just sent me an email. It's, you know, Do you know that Gilbert has a sister who's like an award-winning photographer? It's been no. in the New York Times. And I looked her up on the, on the web, and I looked at her bio, and you can't find any evidence that, that they're, they're related. related. <laughs> Except for her photograph. But you have a sister that's a, oh, a, famous, yeah, she's a yeah. famous photographer, yeah. right? That is your sister. Yes. Is that the sister I met in the hospital? Uh, did you, you just meet one? or I, have I met your mom and I met your sis, one sister. I forget which one was there when yeah. you were there. This one didn't look like a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What, they have like a goatee or no, something? No, the two. And, they, and a parade. They, they, I don't know. I bet she wasn't the photographer. Yeah. They were a lot like you, your mom and your sister. They just kind of didn't talk or Yeah. Anything. Yeah. You all just sat there. <laughs> well, it's a fascinating look into yes. your private life. Is your photographer sister the one with the the uh, kids you wheel around town? Uh, no, that's the, the other, other one. The yeah. other sister gives you all the right. kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, what an accomplished family. Yes. <laughs> The Gottfried. No wonder your wife took the name. <laughs> well, this is exciting. It's like the Adams family, basically. Right. Now, are you going to get like a summer home? Because the kids need some place in the summertime. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Somewhere where you can go chill out. Yes. <laughs> so the family can be closer. <laughs> well, this is, I uh, honestly, despite what you heard, Robin, I heard Gilbert is in a panic. Well, I just don't know what to believe. <laughs> what I should really we believe? I don't know what to believe. Just believe me, right? I think so. Yeah. You're yeah. going with his right. story. Well, there you go. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried is going to be uh, at Caroline's at 8 o'clock on Broadway in Manhattan. That's Thursday. And you can call for reservations, 212-757-4100. Now, Gilbert has a DVD, Dirty Jokes. <laughs> and which he is, needs you to buy this thing. Yes, he really does. <laughs> GilbertGottfried.com. Go check him out. I think you're going to like it. Now, Gilbert, uh, you didn't answer me. Are you going to the Lamaze classes or any kind of Not so classes? far. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Tim. Tim, you're yeah. on the uh -oh. Bayshore, Long Island. Tim, you there? Hello? Go ahead. You're on oh. the air. You're on the air. <laughs> the air is yours. Oh. Oh, Hello? <laughs> You're on the air. The air is yours. Howard. Yes. Hey now. Hey now. Listen, I want to know what you think of the Luder, uh, uh, Luder uh, Skibby uh, steak. Luder, Libby Scooter. Luder, Scooter Scooter Libby. Libby. Luder Skibby. Luder. <laughs> well, well, you know, Scooter Libby, I'm not an expert in this field, but I'll tell you what. When there is a, a branch of the government, a branch of our society, FBI, CIA, CIAs particularly, a lot of people need to work undercover. And what this guy was accused of doing was the most treasonous act you can do. You think he did it or he was set up? I think he was in on it, 
But I think a lot of people are getting their asses uh, covered by the Scooter Libby. But this is treason. When you reveal the name of a person working undercover in the CIA, and that's what he's accused of doing, right, Robin? Well, that was not what he was tried for. What was he tried for? Lying. He was tried for obstructing Lying. justice right. and perjury, yes. So, you know, here we are trying to find out who is the traitor to our country's security. George Bush. Well, I don't know how high up this thing goes. You think they'll pardon him before you... Yes. Him? Scooter Lip, Looter Skibby <laughs> will get a pardon from President Bush. Before? Before, he, oh, as he is leaving office. Not before. He can't do it before. If he does it before, it'll set off a firestorm of people screaming cover-up. Scooter Libby will be, if, first of all, he'll do an appeal. After the appeal, if he goes to prison, he will not spend much time there. President Bush, at the end of his term, will uh, pardon this guy. He's a, he's a Bush insider. He is a dear friend of uh, the families. And he will not go to jail. All right. But you got to understand how serious this thing is. If I was in the fucking CIA risking my life for this country and I have a cover, see, uh, and, 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 and my own government is outing me, I'd be furious. I'd be more furious than Gilbert having a baby. <laughs> and you can imagine the fury and the rage. By the way, good morning, Robin, Artie, George. Awesome having you on the show. Uh, I got a feeling Scooter Libby is really a small potatoes in this, small player. I think uh, you're right. Yeah. But it's a serious offense, and it can't be taken lightly. I felt bad. I was watching the guy on TV, and you see he's going to prison and this and that. And you, know, you feel bad. You know, this is what's wrong with the jury system in our country. You know, even these guys who murder people, people who, like, drive their kids into a lake, they get on trial, they clean them up. You see a poor woman there, they go, oh, she's depressed, and she had a problem. And you look at them, you go... And you don't see the victim, because right. the victim's gone. You don't want to send these people to jail, but someone's got to go to jail. Well, that's my question. Why don't people feel bad about the people who the crime was committed against? Because you said it. They're not there. Can't see them. You're feeling bad for him. Right. He could have kept his mouth shut. That's right. I think he was a fall guy. He was told to take the rap, and he told he'd be pardoned. Yeah, well, that could be. We don't know. All right, thank you. Thank you, Howard. Oh, I'm, I'm terrific. I got an answer for everything. <laughs> no, you are so right. I can't agree with you more. But I'm this a big a... fuck-up, believe me. <laughs> but I don't like this. You felt bad for him because he's no, got to go to jail. No, I'm making a point about that. No, you, don't, you understand something? I don't like to see anyone go to jail. You don't like to see anybody's hey. life ruined. But you've got to understand what we're talking about here. Gilbert, we're talking about treason. Yes. <laughs> now I'm angry. All right. Yeah, Good. accountability for that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, man, do you ever say "aso"? Uh, what does "aso" uh, mean, by the way? Well, that is a legitimate Japanese yeah. phrase. It's the only uh, one I know. Is that so? Is what it means. Ah, uh, uh, so. uh, is that so? Ah, uh, so. Ah, uh, so. Uh, so. Well, not quite that way. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. And usually they say "deska." Uh -huh. Is that so? Ah, so disco. I see. Ah, so disco. <laughs> Doesn't George have a beautiful voice, Gil? Yes. I mean, oh. seriously. He, he has Are... a, a beautiful tone to his voice, unlike you, who's yes. very great. You, know, you look like my uncle. Who <laughs> <laughs> is uh, <laughs> the Coca-Cola representative <laughs> in, yeah. in Japan. He's a what representative? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> in Japan. He, he was a... Uh, executive VP of, or something. You got to come in with a photo of your uncle. He looks very much like you. Yeah. Just look at your And his photo. name is Hirohito Gatsu. <laughs> Maybe? No, Maybe it's Gilbert. Susumu Nakamura. Right. My mother's maiden name, and that's the character I'm playing on Heroes. You look like Susumu Nakamura. <laughs> I, I've Gilbert gotten that a lot. Yes. Gilbert, are you a and Trekkie? You... Do, you, do you follow the career no, of George No, you know, that's, that's, I mean, I know about it just through it being on the air, but I never really followed it. You seem to yes. only know TV shows and movies from the 50s and, uh, and earlier. And earlier. Yes. You know, it doesn't seem like you had any kind I, of cultural awareness. I Well, now especially, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, I never saw The O.C., never saw Lost, <laughs> but you, never but saw you, Desperate Housewives. But Georgie Housewife. Jessel impressions. I mean, these yes. guys from... <laughs> My father likes when you do Georgie Johnson. He lived to a hundred. That's right. Hello, Mama. Is that you? <laughs> Mama Nakamura. <laughs> Gilbert, were you adopted? Maybe you are a <laughs> <Yes>. baby. 
<laughs> well, uh, Gilbert is here. He does many great characters. One of my favorite is uh, Dice Gottfried. Yes. <laughs> I, like... I do that. Yes, you do you Dice Gottfried. You don't even know. Wow. In fact, here you are calling someone named Bindi. Have oh. you heard this one? Oh, I may, may, let me see. <laughs> All right. Let's go to uh, this. Here is the guys took Gilbert doing Dice Gottfried from our show and had him make a phony phone call. Some of Gilbert's greatest work. Yes. Of, we take Gilbert's voice and... <laughs> You know, like what we do with you, George, we use your voice, we, yeah. use, we use Gilbert. It's like working with Lassie. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Bendy, you want to Bendy on this? Oh! Fuck is this? Hello? Hey, Bendy, want to swim around Mike Stingray? Oh! What's the bullshit, man? <laughs> By the way, this guy, we had a, Richard had to find a guy named Bindi in the yellow page. Oh, that ain't easy. Yeah. Hello? Well, hello there. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? Paul Winchell. <laughs> <laughs> what is motherfucking? <laughs> hello? Hi, Georgie. How's your health when doing, Mama? Who? <laughs> hey, did you get that paradise, Andrew? I'm not bullshitting on the motherfucker. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yes. Who you want to speak to? Bindi! Who you want to speak to? Yes. Yes! Motherfucker, yes! Who you want to speak to? Oh! 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, take it. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I fuck Desi on his. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're just being silly. Yeah, I trust you. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure, I trust you. I fucked your mom last night. Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You're an animal. <laughs> I want to fuck your big droopy yellow tits. I'm going to fuck your tits. <laughs> no, I can't even get a hard on. You can't get on hard. No. Well, you got a pussy, you don't get on hard. <laughs> Are you gay? Yes. You are gay? I have sex with the uh, pigs. You have sex with pigs? Yes. You fucking asshole. <laughs> You're at your funniest. <laughs> Why don't you make an album of phony phone calls? <laughs> that is terrific. Do you like that? Yeah, there's that, and then what was, the other one was a uh, uh, gay bathhouse. Yeah, the gay bathhouse is great too. Uh, let's uh, let's go. Well, I'll play that later in the yes. uh, in the show. Uh, let's go to Andrew who has a question for Gilbert Dice Gottfried. <laughs> hey Andrew, go ahead. Hey, the only thing Asian about Gilbert is the small cock. <laughs> hey, hey, Gilbert's running into some bad luck. You know, first of all, he gets his uh, girlfriend pregnant because he's too cheap to wear a condom. <laughs> then he gets married. And now Affleck is dropping the duck, so he's I heard all that cash. Affleck duck that you do the voice of. Oh yes. They decided it was a turnoff, and they're getting rid of the duck. <laughs> did you? Did they call you and inform you? Uh, they not yet. They haven't like totally uh, yet. Right now, I think they're in between. You know, I thought the Affleck duck was very effective. Oh yeah, that's how everyone knows Affleck. about the company. I never heard yeah. of Affleck till you started doing that. I, well, what happened is they have a new guy. At uh -huh. Affleck, so it's kind of like... He's got to put his mark yeah, on things. Yeah, so oh. it's basically like the kind of I kind of thinking of like, hey, you know, the we should change the formula to Coca-Cola. But it was a lot of money to you, right? To, yes. to, to be the voice of the Affleck. Yeah, type. but so, so, so far they're still doing it. Okay, yeah. so we don't know yet. It's not... Because yes. uh, we yeah. all read in the paper you were out of a job. Yeah, they had made an announcement that they were going to get rid of it, but okay. then I thought... Uh, they took him aside and said, hey, that's how people know we exist. That's right. Well, maybe they're rethinking it is yes. what you're saying. All right, Gilbert, great. It sounds like your life's really on target. <laughs>
<laughs> really on track. It's great. All right. Gilbert Gottfried this Thursday night, 8 o'clock at Caroline's. And also, don't forget, uh, GilbertGottfried.com for Dirty Jokes, the DVD. I'm going to take a break here. When we come back, Robin's going to do a little news. George, you could comment on some of the things that are going on in oh, our society. Oh, yes. 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 Mm. I would love that. I comment on the news. <laughs> I love current events. In between, in between fucking Gilbert and the ass. Oh, there's two things I like to eat. Yes. Current events and fucking Gilbert and the ass. <laughs> you do a tremendous uh, George Takei impression. Uh, well, he's a, he's, he looks a little Asian. Yes. Maybe he's related mm, to my uncle. I, I'd, I'd like to bring a little Asian up to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do an announcement right here, Mr. Takei? I'd be happy. All right, here he is, George Takei, our announcer. This is George Takei, and I am fluent in three languages, English, Japanese, and Spanish, which means I can have sex with men from most of the civilized world. Now, if I could only learn French and Italian and Mandarin and German, I could bang the entire United Nations. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after these words. <laughs> oh, my God, I almost just vomited. But I didn't. Eric the Midget making some uh, weird, phone, uh, weird phone calls to me. The guy said, hey, Eric just made a weird phone call. I said, let me guess. He's pissed that I hung up on him the other day. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? I figured he'd be, you know, yelling at you on email or voicemail. Right, here. After that. I got it for you right here. Hello, you big nose jackass. <laughs> what the fuck was the point of hanging up on me this morning? You rude ass piece of shit. Don't you ever fucking do that again. I was trying to get to another point, and then all of a sudden. Isn't it weird when a midget tries to be like a tough guy? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Like if that was Chuck Zito saying it to me, it's a whole different thing. You're <laughs> goddamn right. I'd be apologizing. Quick. Bob, fuck you, you annoying sack of shit. Don't you ever do that again. That was uncalled for. No fucking reason to do that to me. I had more to say, and I've had more to say for two or three weeks. That was my first time to get on this show in two or three weeks, and you abruptly hung up on me. You know, there are people thinking that I'm not calling the show because instead of you take my calls every morning, I've called, you leave me the fuck on hold. And people, they don't know that listening to the show. They don't know that I'm, they don't know that I'm sitting on hold waiting for you to pick up my line. As far as they know, I'm asleep. Or just listening to the show, not calling. Let me on the air and don't fucking hang up on me. Got it? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> hey, uh, for those of you who thought Eric isn't calling the show or is asleep, he's on hold. <laughs> I just told him. <laughs> he's the greatest, isn't he? <laughs> Eric the Midget. I love him. <laughs> I, I, Doug Goodstein just told me that Howard TV is going to do in the day in the life. Of Eric? Yeah. Oh, great. I think it's going to be sad. Well, I do. I still want to see it. I'll watch it. <laughs> Jerry, you're on the air. Nothing wrong with being sad. Oh. Go ahead, Jerry. Hey, how's it going, Howard? Big All right. fan, man. You know, I went to high school with Eric the Midget. And uh, he he was such an ass. You think he's a jerk now. He, he ruined the last couple years of high school because he had the entire place revamped for handicapped people. It was like a hundred-year-old building made out of brick, and he had him put in an elevator for him. No kidding. Yeah, and the thing what is... What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a regular high school, but... Uh, How did that ruin high school for you? What's that? I say, how did that ruin high school for you? I mean, he got a... Well, because cause they, they had construction crews going all the time, building ramps. Any place you would have stairs, they had to put in ramps. And they couldn't just put a ramp, they had to tear out everything and put in concrete and it had to be level. I see. So while you were trying to learn, let's say, you had <laughs> noise in the background. Yeah. Oh, okay. He is a pain in the ass. <laughs> Let me stay home. I can't hear you. They're putting in a ramp as we speak. 
We're making way for Eric. You mean he was the... He was the guy who... He's the reason he failed. Oh, his plan. Was he, was medical he the... school, not for that goddamn midget. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you? Yeah, what was he going to be that got derailed? Yeah, what happened? He's the reason I'm a shipping clerk. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do for a living now? Me? Yeah. I'm a land surveyor. I, uh... I walk around, look at the land. <laughs> so you realized your dream. So what well. were you going to be before Eric got in the way? A brain surgeon. I was going to run for president, but, you know, that didn't work out. No, you know what else? I would have been president if it wasn't for that midget wanting access to toilets. <laughs> And, you know, he yeah, why can't why can't Eric just shit in his pants? Why do we have to put a ramp to the toilet? Wear a diaper. And yeah. it could it could just be a ramp. It had to be a safe ramp. <laughs> you had to build railings. You go, yeah, that midget ruined my high school, man. We had to put in ramps for him. <laughs> Does it bother you that he's more famous than you? Uh, no. No. I, I, my I marks would have been a lot time. higher if it wasn't for that damn midget. <laughs> No, you know, he never left the basement anyway. He didn't need the fucking ramps. Well, <laughs> you're obviously very burned by this. <laughs> uh, let me give you another visual of what it was like to see him walk. I was I... going to be an opera singer, sir, <laughs> before Eric the Midget came along. Well, I'm sorry to hear all of that. Thank you. And I, I could have I studied harder, but it wasn't for that teacher yelling so loud so the deaf kids could hear. <laughs> Where was your Come compassion on. for him, sir? I mean, he is oh, very handicapped. He, he, he'd walk around and... I would have graduated if it wasn't for that braille uh, reading material. Now, let the guy say, okay. what did you say? Okay, so he'd be riding around his little motorized wheelchair, and he had he, he was in special ed, except maybe one or two, so he, he always was hanging around the retard. And so there was this one guy who was, like, probably, like, six feet tall, kind of chubby, with hella acne scars, and uh, he'd follow Eric around like a zombie. He didn't speak. Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> And Eric would, Eric would, would think Wait, they're doing construction. Eric, You'll have to talk up. <laughs> then he'd go and do something. Whatever Eric would tell him, he'd go do it. And then he'd get behind Eric again and follow him around like he was like, like Eric was a little evil genius in a wheelchair. And there was this crazy, like, dude, <laughs> Wait, sir. Around. You know what? What you said would have been real funny, but they're doing construction. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's coming here next week. We got to build him around. So, in other words, you're saying Eric ruined the high school because him and this other guy. Walked around and he would, uh, it, it was distracting to you. <laughs> Motorized around. He'd yell at people to get out of the way, too. Get out of my way. So hey, I'm trying to get by here. All right, thank you. I Let's go to Yucko the Clown. <laughs> yes, Yucko. Fucking wheelchair. Hey, Gilbert. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Thanks for uh, charging me for your piece of shit DVD. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about that? Yeah, Yucko tells a story. He was working with you. Yes. And uh, you said to him, do you want my new DVD? And he said, sure. And, and then you charged him for it. <laughs> for real. Is that true? Well, I charged him extra because I signed it. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. All right, Yucko. Uh, hey, why don't you name the baby Kaiki He? I'm going to fucking fucking spot, you fucking fudgebacker. <laughs> Thank you, Yucko. <laughs> what about naming your child Kaiki He? I like it. That's, That's catchy. It's got a ring to it. It's catchy. Boy, Yucko really has good ideas for naming children. Yes. Kike, Kike Heeb Godfrey, like Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's got quite a ring. Oh. Hey, you know what? You know who we... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gilbert. No, I had one question for George that yes. I, I heard in an interview. That you said the two things you are ashamed of in your career were being in two movies where you were like an offensive Asian stereotype. And both times they were Jerry Lewis films. Oh. <laughs> Is that true? Is that right? I have done Jerry Lewis films, yes. <laughs> wow. And were you, were you upset by your role? You had to bring that up, yes, didn't yes. you? Yes, <laughs> yes. We all have skeletons in our closet, don't we? <laughs> Not like yours. <laughs> Ours aren't getting fucked. <laughs> Uh, what? One, one must have been hardly working. I remember he put in the buck teeth and stuff. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, I, nope. It was me as I am. Yes. Uh, but, okay, uh, where, what were the two films? Do you remember? Um, one was called The Loudmouth. <laughs> okay. And the other one was um, Which Way to the Front. Oh, okay. And I was a 
a interesting Japanese question soldier. you ask yourself oh, later in life. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten about it all. Wait a second, so you played a Japanese soldier? Uh, a, co a comic Japanese soldier. Right, and, and you, you felt it was demeaning to the uh, Asian people. Well, I heard from them. I see. Yes. <laughs> Wait, you were offended, but did you get offended by a Japanese character Jerry was doing, too? You know, this was comedy. Oh, you know, okay. I mean, I, I'd be offended by you if I were that sensitive. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you have nothing against Jerry? No, no, he's a great comic, and he was a a, a real pioneer, I think, because he was it, on his set. I uh, was the first time I saw a, a TV monitor, so that we didn't have to wait until dailies to see the scene that we just played. Right, he invented that. He he was the the first person to use that. Right, and so you know he he was really a a, a, a trailblazer. I know he doesn't stop telling us. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, this is an exciting day. We have Gilbert Gottfried here, who's appearing at Caroline's on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. And if you want reservations, 212-757-4100. Also, he has that website that is so magnificent, gilbertgottfried.com, state of the art. Uh, like Jerry Lewis, Gilbert is on there inventing brand new ways to look at the internet. <laughs> Purchase Gilbert's DVD, Dirty Jokes. Let me bring in uh, Steve Langford and John Hine, who have updates for us. Steve Langford from the Howard 100 News team. He is always ready with an update. Steve, what do you have for us today? Just some of the stories we're working on in the Howard 100 Newsroom. Is history repeating itself here on the Stern Show? Will Artie Lang pull a Jackie Martling? Who better to ask than the joke man himself? And Jackie does not disappoint. Telling Howard 100 News if Artie does leave the show to go to Hollywood, there is a chance he'll fall on his face. But Jackie <laughs> making a point of saying... <laughs> See, he's very savvy. There's <laughs> only a chance. <laughs> but Jackie making a point of saying his own experience is that a guy has to live his life and not get up at four in the morning. All right. Jackie also telling us. So go for it, Artie. <laughs> go for your dream, Artie. Jackie also telling us if Artie leaves and bombs out in Hollywood, there's always a place for him on Jackie's joke hunt. <laughs> oh, that's nice. What about Artie's joke hunt? Artie's, uh, it would be more Artie's loser story hunt. <laughs> yeah, he already decided what his show will yeah. be. Uh, what else you got there, Steve? Also today, what happens when you put a crazed ex-con cab driver in a cage with a butt-eating, blue-cheese-licking booze hound? <laughs> we may soon find out the Reverend Bob Levy challenging crazy cabbie to battle in Bubba's Bubba Gun later this month in Florida. Talk about killers of comedy. Wow. And the Stern Show's driven woman, Robin Quivers, revving up for next month's Grand Prix Celebrity Race in California. Howard 100 News speaking to the competition's head race instructor to find out how Robin stacks up against Martina Navratilova, George Lucas, and John Sally, among others. George Lucas is George racing? George Lucas. I'm going to spin out George Lucas. Uh, very good. <laughs> the intern show tonight, 7 Eastern, Howard 101. And if you see Stern-related news, we want to know about it. Call the Howard 100 News tip line at 877-33-SERIOUS. Choose Channel 100. Or email your tip to Howard 100 News at SiriusRadio.com. All these stories and much more coming up on the Howard 100 Noon Time News. Weekdays, noon Eastern, updates every hour. Very excited to uh, hear those updates thank you very much that is steve langford howard 100 news you know he's upset uh scott DePace. he he feels scooter libby shouldn't go to jail can you imagine how do you come to that conclusion Why would that be? and did he follow the trial or is it just because scooter libby was in the bush administration i don't know dude where are you at with this I how do you fucking how do you side right, against here we go he he actually it was, studied it was a martha stewart thing all over again they got him on something he was not guilty of originally but you for. have to understand he's it part of a cover-up do you no, understand no, it wasn't. don't we have a right to know who revealed the names uh, we do we found out it's this guy named armitage who is no it isn't yes it was no, it was it colin wasn't. powell's assistant he was the one who supposedly leaked it it wasn't even a leak she was barely undercover she was already out in some uh, Russian spy magazine. Who... No, that so... is this. That's Rush Limbaugh talking. No, it's you. not. In fact, I just read that on uh, you Wikipedia. You must be educated, <laughs> dude. He was tried for lying. He was saying uh, same thing that Clinton else, was, and apparently you had no problem with that, right? Clinton George? wasn't tried for anything. He should have been tried for lying. He, he was tried for lying and found guilty of that. Yeah, and what was his punishment? Just disbarment from Arkansas. That was it. Right uh, for for lying to yeah. a grand jury. Don't you think it's a little bit uh, less a devious lie than to out 
and be part of a conspiracy to out someone who works for the CIA? Shame you're, on you're you. You're assuming you're they animal. did that. Dude, it's you're not You're a like... traitor to this country. No, listen. You should go live in Iran. Bullshit. Listen. You... If, if she was sitting there uh, truly undercover in Russia and, and Cheney calls someone up to have her killed or something, yeah, absolutely. That's what the law is there for. Holy man. This is someone in Holy this country who is it. working, you doing clerical work. Get out of here. You don't know what she's this. doing. Yes, she, yes, she was. You don't know don't what she was want doing. To discuss it. it could have put Pick other him. deep cover operatives in jeopardy. But Scooter exactly. Libby did not do anything. He lied in his part of How the cover-up. How do you know he up. lied? His story the, was he forgot. Your jury found them guilty. I, I watch a case every when night. You were, in the, you, were you on the jury? No, but every no. night I would I would hear the every headlines. Night. And you every night you would hear the headlines. That's not being listen in the to me. courtroom. Well, listen to me, though. But every, every Listen, they got the OJ trial wrong, too, right? So juries are not infallible. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. You don't even know what the hell you're talking Shame about. You're, and you're you. talking about this. You don't even went to OJ. Why don't you tell George Takei <laughs> you're against gay marriage? Go ahead and tell him. <laughs> oh, you are? Walking in the face. Yes, he is. All right. Well, I, yes. Yes, Why? I am. Why First of all, go ahead and not, tell him. I would like to say it's not a major issue. I don't vote on that issue for me. But I do feel that... Uh, I don't see the reason for, just like you don't see the reason against. Well, do you know that there are legal inequities involved here? Okay, I'm fully for every civil right, you, you know. Well, then every... you're for it. Because that's what we're being deprived of. If it's, I mean, a, if it's a monetary issue, if it's the ability to do certain to things. To be able to inherit each other's. Uh... Yeah, that, that, no, I'm absolutely Wait for Wait a second, that, so. why don't you come clean? Come why don't you tell George to his face that you're against gay couples adopting children? He hates gay. Why don't you, te why don't <laughs> Boy, you tell him? Your boys in the back are going crazy. Tell right him now. right now to his face. I, I don't think that that is an ideal Look situation at for a family. Okay, there are many ideal situations where you have uh, a man and a woman raising a child. Absolutely. And look at the screwed up kids. Look at oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And look but at the beautiful the children that are being raised by gay and lesbian uh, couples. Listen, Scott, I, I'm talking in generalizations here. I, I don't think Scott, that it's Scott. A do you what? see this man sitting here? I see him. He's right He's there. He's a great He's a man. Nice I'm going to tell you something. Not only is he a nice guy. gay people. Hold it. I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, you do. Tell him don't. don't. Come to his face, you hate the Asian. No, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I want to make a point here. This man is probably in the most loving relationship of 20 years That's with Brad. You're telling Probably me more that's stable great. than anyone you're in. He's together. Please, you're he's got a sense of he's got a sense of humor. He's demonstrated. And he eats and he goes to the bathroom. Well, yeah, and so he's law abiding person. Yeah, you know so that's why you he's think he's not uncle. a fit. You don't think he'd be a fit mother? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> You've said yourself, Howard, things like, so do you Bullshit. think, do you think what a, child, I said? a child what? growing up in a family of two gay people, you don't think that's it's been a hard it's life? Fine. I, you know what? There are so many unwanted children in this world. You fucking religious nuts. Listen, it's not about religious religion. Right. Oh, that's what you I know are. myself a child from my raising my in kids. An orphanage instead of being with George Takei. Are you fucking crazy? No, no that's not what I'm saying. You always say get out of here. Get out, you say. No, you can't. Wait a minute. I got to know. What do you know from raising? Your kids. From raising my children, I know that my kids get a totally different experience from my wife than they do from me. Yeah. And I can only assume. Why? Because you have a penis? No, because you're two different people, you jackass. No. I'm tired no, of you. No, it's bullshit. because there's a, a different there's a different uh, viewpoint. There's a different. You know, and well, you're what are a you good... saying? That that's absolutely necessary? You sit there and stare at that Xbox all day. Absolutely what kind of... necessary, Robin. Again, I'm not saying. <laughs> you think Gilbert's going to be a better father? You're just you're not let me but you're not letting me talk. You I'm think not saying Gilbert's it with can't. a woman, he's going to be a good father. You crazy? Yeah, look, <laughs> look at the look example at right here. Look at that yeah. right there. Look, I don't know what you guys are trying. I, you're not going to prove anything. I'd be a better anything. father if I got fucked in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, what are you trying to prove? I, I can't get a word out, so, you know. Well, right. well you're saying that uh, only a man and a woman can raise a healthy child. No, I, I did not say that. So you didn't listen to what well, I you're said. You're against You did not listen to what I said. I listened. I said it is, it is very possible, but in general terms, I don't think it's a good idea for... Why? You know, a lot of things aren't good ideas that people do every day. You don't do anything about it, though. Why do you have to do something about gay parents? Didn't you what? tell Look George in the face? I've looked at him. And tell him. No, you haven't. Tell him that you said if your son is gay, Look he gay couldn't face. come in the house with his boyfriend. <laughs> tell him. You wouldn't Am I lying? Not what I said. Giving. Tell him. Tell no, him to his said. face. I'd like to know the reason why you hold that position based on generalities. Hey, you big, bold fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
cred right on there. Uh, what, what, what topic are we back to the adoption? I'm up to why you wouldn't allow your son, if he was gay, to come to his house with his say lover. That. At Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. First of all, that, that was 10 years ago before I had children. Wait a second. No. But, but secondly, no. did yeah, you I say did not it or not? Yes, God, your child was I would Earth. love that. But I well, do look at George. Think, Don't look at me. I do think it would be. It would be. Um, it's the word it's uncomfortable. Son. I would. It would. It would be very you would hard. Be uncomfortable. Yes. yes. It would be very hard for me to accept. And what I did say is. If he did show extra affection and, and kissing and that sort of thing, I'd be very <laughs> pissed off at it. Many gay and lesbian <laughs> parents have raised straight, heterosexual, healthy, uh, productive yeah. uh, members of, and of society. And most gay people were raised by heterosexuals. Exactly. We're, so what the hell does that prove? All right, so no heterosexuals so you can have pass a law. The hell? No, what Scott. Stupid, Scott. What you're saying is you want to have laws discriminating people because of their sexual orientation. That's right. It's American. I, I didn't say yes, you are saying. Law. What you are Come clean and look George in the face and say, yes, because I you're gay, you should not have rights. I did not say pass a law. But if but look, I was the one making the decisions, I would say that, and I'm in Rush the adoption. Rush Limbaugh, motherfucker. You so are you. I, it's not about him. Why don't you just, why sure you just you get know. a Rush I Love Rush Limbaugh fucking t-shirt? I, I, wear it every I day. don't, because I, I barely listen to him. the same Rush Limbaugh him. dumb Dude, arguments. Why is it whenever Republicans have viewpoints, it comes from other places? You. You're Rush Limbaugh. You don't you're know what to look like to, to <laughs> justify a law. The, you're even trying to uh, uh, revise the Constitution I to am? add an amendment, amendment banning equality for. First of all, I am lesbians. not. If, if you're talking about what the president was trying to do, not yes, a hair on that, head. that wow. was because. <laughs> and they're doing I, that I in all the states. Do, do you oh, even fuck. understand his side of that story? <laughs> See, I don't think you've even listened to it. What he said was it should be allowed, the state right, should be able to much. make up thank their you. own mind. Well, the problem was the Supreme Court, state Supreme Courts were changing that, so he then had to take the next That's step. right. And is that okay. right? Well, to, look, to, if, to if you're going to take away the state's right. And write in discrimination. If you're going to take away it a state's no right government's to right. decide what marriage is. It is hey, no God, government's God. right to determine right. what two Enough individuals do. <laughs> Enough of this. This is silly. Hey, Howard. Yes. He's, he's a very silly guy. We're not going to make it. Based on your premise, should a state be allowed to ban heterosexual marriage? Sure. Okay. They can. What does that prove? No, no, no. Listen, listen, this is a dumb conversation. <laughs> this, guy's got, this guy was raised, I don't know where, but maybe in Delaware. Kentucky or some Delaware. shit. Alan, what? You know, I'm just looking at Rush Limbaugh's website, and of course, third paragraph down regarding the, you know, Scooter Libby thing, it's the whole Martha Stewart thing. Right, like, the like, Martha Stewart argument. Gary, I, I swear of on course, the life of my children, I have not listened to Rush Limbaugh for three think, days. You guys just think exactly alike. Maybe. Maybe. Well, he's been so programmed, and you know you've heard Rush Limbaugh. So again, the Republican is programmed, was... but you liberal free thinkers no, you are, are so great. You are programmed. As soon as Rush Limbaugh went bald, this guy goes bald. <laughs> That's all I know. Thank you, Scott. You're very My welcome. Director. Thank you. All right, here's hey, a different you view. Bald fuck. Right. <laughs> I'm not leaving until Fred stops. Fuck <laughs> out. <laughs> Baldy! Baldy! He's a bald TV director! Baldy! Baldy! He's a bald TV director! Nice. All right, let's get over to John Hine, who hosts a wrap-up show every day. Johnny Boy at 11 o'clock. It's your turn. What's up? Well, Will the Farter tried out a whistle and a harmonica, serenaded George Takei with Mary Had a Little Lamb, <laughs> and tried to hit Richard with some shit freckles. We'll discuss Will's appearance, how Richard's holding up after having his head shoved into a farter's ass, and how Sal performed so well on that quiz. Okay. Also, Howard wondered if he could work with Jackie again, and everyone reminisced about how tense things were when Jackie was around. <laughs> you remember Gilbert? Oh, yes. Gilbert used to get very upset. <laughs> he hated doing the show. That's right. Well, we'll talk more about how Jackie was on a daily basis. If Robin is clearing a path for Artie to join him and take calls <laughs> to speculate on how things would go if Jackie came back into the studio for just a day. Uh, we would be welcome him with open arms. If, I, if I left, would we be living together? <laughs> <laughs> it could hurt, happen that way. Also, a recently married Gilbert Gottfried filled us in on his wedding and future as a father, but still hasn't referred to his better half as his wife or touched her pregnant stomach. Can you believe that? No. <sighs> touch he, the stomach. I'd be a little freaked out. He hasn't had sex. You wouldn't touch your wife's stomach? 
I, I guess I would because you have to. You no, know? but if, if there's a baby in there, you wouldn't want to like feel the foot pressing against the belly and stuff. Am I crazy? Marty, you want to be a dad one day. Right. You're going to be so excited when you finally find somebody you can knock up that you're going to be wanting every experience. Gilbert's like, mm, I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this I have to hear. Well, when it's a kid, when it's an actual kid, I might be into it. Not when it's covered by my fat wife's stomach. <laughs> Gilbert, do you... He's a man next to my own heart. <laughs> Do you can picture like you holding the baby when it's born and like rocking it? Do you feel singing any... to it? No, I'm, I can picture Artie doing it. No, can you? See, that I would you, love do you think you'll even hold the baby? As long as it's two gay guys doing it. Yes. <laughs> no, seriously, Gilbert, do you think you'll hold the baby? Maybe. I don't know. I you guess think I'll give have the, to. Do you think you'll give the baby kisses? <laughs> do you? We'll see when that happens, wow. yes. Will you teach the baby how to do the aristocrats job? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, this is a disaster. Do you want your little baby to be a comedian? Oh, oh, boy, that would be, yeah. What a great life. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey, Jr.? I'm, uh, I'm quite frankly worried about that. <laughs> I see Gilbert's kid in like 15 years being like a player, like at the clubs, making. Well, yeah, the well, you gotta get yeah, the old man's be, money. Yeah. Yeah. He'll do everything Gilbert wished he could have done. He'll be cool with yeah. it. I hope, the, I hope the kid is really super good looking yeah. and gets yeah. laid all the time, and Gilbert be jealous. Right. That'd be good. All right, go ahead, Johnny. Well, we're going to talk about how Gilbert sounded today. If George might possibly think that he looks a little bit Asian, <laughs> and take calls on whether he's the most unhappily married man and expected father we've ever heard. Absolutely. And let. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. And last but not least, after looking George in the eye, was, has Scott DePace changed his mind about gay marriage and what would happen if his son brought a man home for the holidays? Notice when a gay man was in the studio, his his tune became a little softer. You right. understand? Did he look you in the eye, George? No. Oh, he certainly did. Oh, he did? He did. Well, we yeah. made him. Yeah, he, didn't choose yeah, he to was be browbeaten into that. Artie, why aren't you eating your cupcake? What's going on? <laughs> I don't like that time. You don't like that Oh, time? that was my gift to you. Yeah, it's I was cat. passing I by there, and there was that beautiful looking cake that I thought you'd enjoy. I don't like the carrot cupcakes. You, you don't like Oh, it's too healthy. No, <laughs> I just, I don't think, I never like carrot cake. Carrot right. cake is what I would eat, and I thought maybe. Well, you eat it good. <laughs> it's got that white cream on it you love so much. <laughs> well, you like that orange stuff on top, don't you? Uh, no, you can take you can it off. off. You can take it Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, anything else, Johnny? Well, we're going to let DePace come on and speak his mind and take calls to see if he has any support whatsoever out there. All right, I'm sure he does. That's all in a wrap-up. All right, thank you very much, John Hine. Let's go right over to Robin Quivers, who looks beautiful today and is ready to report the news. I can't believe what a Neanderthal Scott DePace is. I would mm -hmm. love for my son to have a gay He's unbelievable. boyfriend and come home. I don't and... say he necessarily <laughs> would love it, but it doesn't have to be uh, a thing where he wouldn't let him in the house. Oh, I'd love it. You don't funny. want your son to be in a loving relationship. Be the well, you know Wait now a second. what we're up against. Party. You wouldn't let your son in the house if he was gay? I would I would love it. I would want I didn't say you love it. I would I want that kid wouldn't... to get fucked in his ass so hard. <laughs> oh. I'm just I'm you... trying to get a job in show business. <laughs> No, I would never. No, There's no strong, there's no, and I think Scott has changed. There's no circumstances where I wouldn't let my kid in the house. Gay, yeah, well, you know, you do it. Well, there gotta, are parents who do that. You got to keep loving. I mean, there your are so many child. runaway kids, and they, you know, come to Hollywood and New York. Right. And it's really a tragic sight. And they get on Star Trek. <laughs> no, no, many of them, you know. Get into dope. That's no, hard. They get into they, dope. They go on the street and they're sucking some right. old queen's cock for money. That's right. That's right. You don't want. I don't want. I don't want them doing that. All yeah. right. So then you'd be nice so to you. Be kid. a good father. I would always be. And I. Put, right. I think you guys didn't let Scott get out. That I think he says he would. No. Don't no. No. He didn't say that. He didn't say. He didn't, he didn't say that. He, he wasn't on the way. He either. danced around it. He didn't want to answer that. <laughs> Let's go to Robin Quivers who has the news. Let's get down into some <laughs> topics here. I like the close up of his ball. That was good. <laughs> oh, poor Robin. Every day. <laughs> it's the only way they can get to the <laughs> Is that why you have a glass wall yes, surrounding yes. you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on and on. Boy, oh 
boy. It's some song. All right, thank you. Get you. A, you get a good riff, you stick with it. <laughs> and I can change it lyrics. no matter what. All right, uh... The Daily News has come up with a list of the top 50 albums of all time. Really? Well, the top album of all time is Jimi Hendrix Experience. We well, all know you that. are wrong, according to the Daily News. What do the Daily News know about the top album? I guess they got a bunch of What do of they say? Uh, I'll give you a top five. Number one, Jimi Hendrix Experience. There's no better album than that. Am I right, George? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And number two, everybody knows that. Except for Scott the Pace. Uh, Let me see if you're even in the top five here. No, no you're not. Best of Liberace. What is the top song according to them? I'd put Experience uh, in the top ten, I would, but not number one. What's number one number for you? One. What could be better than that? Best album of all time is... Sgt. Peppers? ...is Born to Run by Mr. Bruce. Get the fuck out of here. Sorry. It's not even in the top None five. None of you know what you're talking about. It's my about. top one. It's my number, number one. Revolver I by think, the Beatles. I'm going to say What's Sergeant the best Pepper? Beatles album? Start best Beatles that. album of all time is yes. Sgt. Peppers. It changed yes. the way everything happened went down and in music. And I, I that agree is not only the best Beatles album, it is the number one uh, album See, that's what I thought time. they might know. Well, it's number two, but okay. <laughs> number two. It's behind Born to Run. Jimmy Hendrix experience. It is. Gilbert, what is it? you agree with me that Sgt. Pepper's is the greatest album of all time uh, yes. next to Jimmy Hendrix? Gilbert yeah. was the one who yeah. got it right. Yes, I was the one who said Sgt. Pepper. <laughs> See, Number I'm not, two. I'm not the complete idiot. Everyone says. You actually listen to music? Yeah, yes. yes. We found much. something he likes. Number two is the soundtrack to Bud and Lou Meet the Gods. <laughs> 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 Abby <laughs> Costello of Me Friends. <laughs> Love Me Tender. Pink We Lloyd. gotta get this crate to McDougal's Dark. house of ours. <laughs> Dark side of the moon. Dark side of the moon. Ah. It's number two? Number two. That's ridiculous. You're yeah. gonna be shocked at number three. Biggest selling album of all Number right? three has to be... I'm gonna... Uh, I was gonna say a Van Halen album, but I'm not going to because it's not consistent enough. Uh... Gee, number three, what would be Well, the first three? Van Halen album is great. It's pretty damn it's, great, it's, it's right? Not, yeah, but it, you, I, I don't think you Well, what's better than that? Well, I think there's a, a couple of Beatles. You could, you, a couple well, of Beatles albums. You have you to could... think of the great bands, the Who, no. the Rolling Stone. Oh, okay. I mean, I can't believe that Who's next? Uh, I'll, give, Who's I'll next? give you any Rolling Stone. I'll give you I'll, uh, Exile on Main Street is probably number three or four. I bet they, I bet they put sticky fingers above that. <laughs> What is it? Uh, number three is Michael Jackson's Thriller. Get the oh, fuck out of here. And Artie, you should have known that. That is the most overrated <laughs> bullshit, Michael Jackson. Michael good. Jackson it's is, good. is oh, not it's... even good. Eddie Van Halen's on beat it. That's a crap, right, Gilbert? I, I never understood the new, the you know the later Michael Jackson. No. I mean, he was fun when he was with the Jackson 5. <laughs> the the adult Jackson. Michael, he, he, was lo fun he lost to hang you when he became when an adult. When he was still a black man. Yes, yes. He was fun to hang out with. Yeah, yeah, he was fun to party with. No, no, no that later, I never, number four I never is got what? Number four, I can't believe nobody said any Led Zeppelin. That's true. Okay. Zeppelin Led two? Zeppelin four. Uh, four. Four. Zoso? Four, yeah, they like it. Uh, that's the one I always point and to. And number five. Who's next? The best of George Jessel. Sticky oh. Fingers. Exile on Main Street. It's not with lonely hearts on a brand. Number five we is you two. We hope that you enjoy the show, Mama. Joshua's Tree. Joshua, Joshua Tree. Tree. No. The Joshua Tree. Absolutely Tree. overrated you two. Can, as I ask you where, can I ask you where Born to Run and I, it has to be in there? The Rolling Stones Exile on Main Street is number six. Do you imagine somebody would make a list as dopey that Exile on Main Street is lower than Bono's bullshit? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fucking they had a, I guess they felt they had to put a U2 thing in it. Stupid the over the day. What the hell's There's wrong with There's three Beatles albums. Paper. Three Beatles albums I put before that. Of course. Uh, Rubber Soul is and, and, uh, and uh, the one you just said. Yeah, You're not absolutely. even thinking about women. Carol King's Tapestry, number seven. No. Fucking break. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> number eight, Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Anything Bob Dylan revisited. sucks. Go ahead. Blood number, on the tracks. Number nine, Beach Boys Pet Sound. I never got that. Oh. They're horrible. <laughs> number 10, Nirvana's Nevermind. No, not number 10. It's a good album, but not number 10. Pearl Jam's 10, number 11. All right, I go along Just with that. Just tell me where Born to Run is. All right, let me see. Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run, number 15. Yeah, let's see. All right, so it's in Number there. one for me. Number 16 is Prince's Purple Rain. So, you know, they're all... What's a, what's, where's the first Who Purple record Rain there? is uh, one of the greatest see, albums of who? all time. Is who's, right. who's next the, the one? I'm curious. <laughs> who's next is cannot possibly be on Who's honest. next was Horrible. number 22. Okay, who's next? Yeah. It's a and is Shania 
between. Is that Stop about? it. <laughs> Purple Rain should be in the top five. The Grateful Dead is ahead of the who. Really? Oh. Grateful Dead are horrible. Hey, hey Robin, is the who's I next? I myself. Who's next is the first who album? Yep. Okay. 22. Shit. But behind Janiah Twain. Janiah Twain's number one. That's a stand they got to fill up newspapers. These guys don't. Who wrote that column? <laughs> I'm going to write him a letter. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac is number 24. That is a great album. Rumors? Rumors. Yeah. Not a, not a great album. Pink Floyd's The Wall, number 25. No. Is there a Van Halen album on there? A what? Van, Van Halen? Halen. Let me it take would a have look to be here. the first Van Halen or ninth. Jimi Hendrix doesn't show up well, until they're... number 41. Wow. Boy, I, these people don't know what they're talking you about. Are, experience, are you experienced? I really disagree with that. That that placing is ridiculous. No, Shania Twain's much better than Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> By 30. <laughs> yeah. The Eagles Hotel <laughs> California, number 35, behind Shania Twain. Yeah, wow. Shania Twain. As soon as Shania Twain's on the list, you're right. Close the paper. Right. Just close it. Right. 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 Chicks, number 33, ahead of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, uh, that's crazy. All right, uh, let's move on. This is a silly conversation. And I don't see... The Who. Well, they're right. Well, who's next was on? Oh, the Who's next? Yeah, okay. But who else? Who else is not on this? There's track? only one Stones record. Sticky no, Fingers has oh. got to be. There's a couple of Stones records, but I think there's only one Who. Every Beatles album is better than Shania Twain. Every single one of them. <laughs> I mean, and look, I mean, Led Zeppelin. I mean, my God, what, what are, are I thinking? Santana is. What about 13. Metallica? Metallica does make the list. It's number fourteen. Which album? Metallica, nineteen ninety-one. All right. What is that? Uh, is that that black album? Uh, the black album. What no, about ACDC that... black album? What's yeah, that? Yeah, back in black's got to be. Back in black is on the list. ACDC, where are you? I saw you. You right. are number seventeen. Right. Yeah. All right. Still behind Shania Twain. <laughs> Thirty-eight is Marvin Gaye's "What's Going On." They're crazy. That's a brilliant album. Yeah, they're crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, anything else, Robin? Captain America. Are you a big fan? Captain America, I never liked. It. What he, about Gilbert Gottfried's? I don't know the whole deal with that. I'll tell America. you why I don't like Captain America. What? He doesn't really have any powers. Well, I He's didn't a big know shield. that uh, Captain America, America no. came out in World War II. Right. As a, a reaction to the Nazis, and they gave him super soldier serum. <laughs> yeah. Good reaction to the Nazis. <laughs> and so he could, he was the ultimate human. He could uh, bench press 1,100 pounds, run a mile in about a minute, and outspar, outsmart any spy. So uh, that was, was his claim to fame. He didn't really have any superpowers, but they have killed him off. Mm. Yeah, mm, he dead. dies. Well, that means no one bought the, the comic. episode. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, they brought back Superman. The question is, will there be another Captain America? Those that if you're making up a guy, why stop at 1,100 pounds? He can press. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was a method to his madness. All right. Uh, Every black guy on the planet can bench press 1100. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why they had to off. Except the guys Captain on the America. Except the guys on the Jets front line. Anyway. <laughs> uh, your daughter's in high school. Okay. They give her excerpts from the vagina monologues to read. Go ahead. But they tell her she can't say vagina. No, that's crazy. That's, that's silly. Well, that happened in a Westchester uh, public high school, and now they've suspended the three girls who disobeyed the rule and actually said the word vagina together. Could you say while pussy? While they were reading the vagina monologue. Just say pussy instead of no. vagina. You can say cunt, but you can't <laughs> say vagina. We yeah, told it was you just, that ahead of time. That's right. They should have used another word. Yes. <laughs> right. That's it's, all. it's the cunt chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the principal's head would have exploded if they did that. Tell you what, that title's got a way better ring to it, the cunt chronicles. <laughs> better I alliteration. I would, too. I actually saw the vagina monologues. Oh, yeah. No. I think you went play. with your daughter, right? That sounds like torture. Well, are you having a daughter? <laughs> <laughs> you Get gotta, ready. You got to do shit like that. <laughs> oh. You got to relate to your girl. Or a gay son. <laughs> <laughs> when I wanted to last play George Hated. What? Everything's wonderful. Oh, no, no, there's some pretty bad plays. Well, two man, bad plays. I'm, um, you know, you forget one the bad ones. man fell in love with a woman. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, uh, the one with Cherry. Uh, Jones. Cherry Jones. Yeah, uh, that uh, and you know, uh, three people. All doubt. 
No, no, no. Oh, that was that brilliant. was wonderful. That was okay. brilliant. <laughs> she did, the one she did after that. Well, I mean, George, why do you think gay men love theater so much? Honestly, it's not such a stereotype. Well, it's like you know, uh, because it's always into the competition of life as uh, as it's played out in, on the basketball court. We see the um, resonance of life in our own terms, like you know, the journey's end. I just <laughs> asked a question. He just said. I don't understand it's the answer. It's sports, is well, what he said. You want well, musicals more but, than a play. No, well, musicals, too, like Company is about this uh, guy who remains a bachelor into his late 30s, and all his friends are getting married, and he sees the uh, dysfunctional marriage. And, see, musicals are brutal to me. I can't deal with a musical. Well, you like uh, Jersey brilliant. Boys. I like the music. I can, you know, listen to a fucking All right, tape. let's move on. I just had a simple question. I still don't know the answer. We have a whole dissertation. Right, go, ahead, go ahead, Robin, uh, please. There's another uh, sex with the teacher scandal. Uh, and another hot teacher. This in chick, the paper today, yeah. This this is some freaky teacher. Good-looking girl in her 20s. Emily Stripp, 23. Emily, 23, hot, nice hair, the whole thing. Doing She's it been... with her student who's special ed. A special ed Whoa. kid. Mm. Can you imagine? I couldn't get laid in high school. Yeah. And this kid is special ed and he's getting it. Do you have any pictures of her? Yeah. Yeah, in she's in the paper. Yeah. You'd like her, Gilbert. I don't want you to see it. You'd, You'd like, like her. It. You're retarded. You'd like her. <laughs> You're special ed. Yeah, the kid suffers from psychological problems. You've got the IQ of a three-year-old. You'd like her. Gilbert, you know instead, what, uh, of, instead of Asian, tell your mongoloid. <laughs> You know what Gilbert's You know what Gilbert's nickname was in high school? What? Ed. Uh, uh, special Ed. Special Ed. Uh, the two had sex multiple times at the teacher's Bronx home from last October to November and in the evening and the early morning at the student's Bronx home in December. Could you, doesn't that make you mad that she's with the special ed kid? Yep. You, you'd no. think she'd do a little, a little better than that. Right. I mean, you, she thinks she'd hey, be doing... Hey, buddy, you want retard? <laughs> <laughs> the kid. Now, you what know, you always... What, fucking that retard? Oh! You're always saying, who's the kid that blows this? You know, What, he... she blowing that retard? Oh! <laughs> Why would you tell when you're having such a good time? Of course. Well, he did a keep it a secret. Kid. Yes. He denied... Uh, repeatedly that this was She's going on. She's getting down with someone with Down syndrome. Oh! <laughs> Are you fucking but... this woman? No! <laughs> oh! But once the teacher broke up with him, he got upset. And he admitted it to his mother that they were getting it on. I was fucking the teacher. I was... Taking my dick in the thing, yeah, ma. Yeah, he felt jilted by her, so he came. I was jilted by when I was eating her tootsie. So that's what you can't do. You got. I was eating her big hairy tootsie. <laughs> you gotta sleep with these kids. You can't break up. She with could probably them. get away with not shaving fully with a retard. Too. <laughs> okay, but did your uh, teachers ever come on to you? <laughs> Uh, anything else, Robin? Um, Only Mr. Weinstein. Not really? <laughs> the Rolling Stone TV show. You remember that uh, movie? It was uh, kidnapping. It was about kidnapping Mick Jagger. The uh, sitcom. Oh, I was happy to see this. It got canceled. It right? is gone because they couldn't get Mick number one to do anything, and uh, so their big publicity effort was about how they got Mick Jagger to do a sitcom. The original name. And then he didn't want to do it. The original name of this television show was Robbing, Let's Rob Mick Jagger. Right. Okay. Obviously, Jagger freaked out a little bit, and they renamed it The Knights of Prosperity. Mm -hmm. It was produced by David Letterman's company. Now, they, uh, Jagger agreed to do it, and then when they went to go film him, he was he suddenly was to be found. unavailable. They had to shoot his entire season in five hours. In New Zealand. In New Zealand. They had to accommodate him. So it basically ruined the show. Now, they came to me. All right? They came to me during the production of this and said, what if we called it Let's Rob Howard Stern, and we want you to be the star of it. And you said, what are you, a retard? That's exactly what I said. I, I said, I need that like a hole in the head. I said, David Letterman's the producer. Why don't you rob David Letterman? Because he's already had this happen to him. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I didn't do it. Yeah, well, it's gone now. The uh, The audience never showed up. 
Gilbert's, because Jagger yeah, didn't. Gilbert's looking at me like, fuck didn't you do it? Do yeah. yeah, I do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a fucking duck on television. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you a turned duck, on, I'm a parrot, I'm a bee. You, you never turned on anything, right? No. No, no. of course not. <laughs> anything that's offered to yes. you, you would take, of course. Uh, the other thing we were talking about, well, we've been continually talking about Anna Nicole Smith. I forgot what to What, is she fucking dead? Oh! <laughs> Dice Godfrey very much here today. <laughs> yes. Dice Godfrey, were you at the funeral? <laughs> you know, Dice Godfrey, you ought to name your baby Bindi. <laughs> or hey, you want to Bindi over? Danny Lynn, there's a name. What about Danny Lynn? <laughs> How about Kikey Heave? <laughs> anyway, Anna Nicole Smith. A lot of people came out of the woodwork and said they were sleeping with her after she died. Uh, they still don't know who the father of her baby is. Some of the interesting things I forgot to mention about the funeral was that one of the guests was Hulk Hogan. I didn't know that. Yeah, Hulk uh, Hogan. I did, I did not did, know that. Did you did not know that, huh, Johnny? Well, here's a true story. This is, this is wild. This <laughs> no, this is, is this now, is for I, real. I understand. Yes. I was reading the paper. This is a true story in the <laughs> paper is, huh. that uh, Hulk Hogan was at the Anna Nicole Smith funeral. Is, is, is that wild, Dad? Is that wild? It was so wild. <laughs> And 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 I was uh, I I actually had sex with Anna Nicole Smith. <laughs> well, that's a true that story. Was, that's uh, and and oh, this no, is that's true. <laughs> that's true. This is a crazy part. I I I was supposed to come. I was supposed to pull out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you are correct. It, it, and and I actually shot my wife. <laughs> And, and and so so there oh, it is. Hey, oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So anyway, Hulk Hogan was a guest. He was invited by Howard K. Stern. Oh. Apparently, they are friends. Well, uh, and this is wild. The K stands for kite. <laughs> Kikey Heavy. Uh, 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 and another person now. I have a Stern act. I have a Stern act. What? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> sweeping. Sweeping up the kitchen, Rush Limbaugh and Anna Nicole Smith. Sweeping up the kitchen. That's right. Rush Limbaugh <laughs> and, and Anna Nicole Smith. Smith. That's right. Go ahead. Uh, name a chore, a bore, and a whore. <laughs> Tim Sullivan. <laughs> Thank you, oh great one. O.J. Simpson now says he slept. <laughs> of course he did. Well, did he meet her? If he met her, he fucked her. Is that really true? Well, they were in Naked Gun 2 together. Oh, right. I'm sure he banged the shit out of her. That's and free murder, too. Yeah, he says that, yeah. And he he's more her. ashamed of that. <laughs> And he says he has some pretty slow sperm, so he can be the father of that baby. Always charming, OJ. Uh, joking, but that's... Uh, um, well, that was that his type, you know, the blonde and the... Yeah. I could see that happening. Tom Cruise, uh, is he, like, keeping... Yes. Katie Holmes prisoner in protective custody or something. Well, he's a control freak from what I'm reading. If you can believe what you see in page six, this guy, Tom Cruise... She gave up the role in Batman, the second Batman that they're producing, yeah. because he doesn't want her uh, in love scenes with, I think it's Christian Bale is the guy's name. Yeah. And now she's in a movie that Tom approves of. With she's, Diane Keaton and Queen Latifah. All girls. Oh, jeez. No, yeah, I mean, imagine, no, and they say the script is horrible. But there are no but, love scenes. But there are no love scenes. So he's got her under lock and key in a sense. And he has already notified the producers he will be on the set every day. Now, what is with this guy? I thought he had jobs. I, I read somewhere, like, he, he's very big on making out with her yeah. when, I, when people are watching. Really? I he's, heard, got, he's got something to prove. Now, that's <laughs> disgusting. I, I heard he was making out with her in front of his mother. Oh. It was, it was like, oh, that's vile. Yeah. It's a little creepy. Yeah, well, they also say that... Uh, and listen, he... he knows creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have another, another stern act. A stern act. Uh, okay. Already on a roll. Hey, oh. Based on the last story there. <laughs> uh, a famous cowboy's horse, Eminem, and O.J. Simpson. A, a famous, famous cowboy's, cowboy's horse, O.J. And M uh, Eminem. Eminem. And, and O.J. That's correct. Name oh, no. a what trigger, a wigger, and an African American. 
<laughs> I thought the N-word was coming up. No, no, never. Never the N-word, no. Uh, not for trigger, the great one. Trigger, a wigger, and an African-American. An African <laughs> All right. That's very good. All right. All right. They're also moving into a compound in uh, California where... What is the second one? <laughs> wigger. Oh, wigger. Right. Go ahead, Robin, please. They're also moving into a compound in California that has enough room for classrooms for his kids because his sister homeschools his children. Tom Cruise, yes. Uh, that's, that's not too creepy. <laughs> Everything about him is creepy. Uh, what, what is... Uh... <laughs> Uh-oh. Were you a big Johnny Carson fan, Gilbert? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Uh, yes. I, I want to fuck your nigger tits. Oh, my oh, God. God. What? Right. Hear that. Hear that. That, that was a callback from the last That's show. That's a callback from three yeah, well, months people ago. People might not understand it. They might think oh. you're a racist. Yeah. We wouldn't want them thinking that. <laughs> Will this baby be a chip off the old block? Yes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the Atkins diet has been declared okay by the AMA, the American Medical really? Association, begrudgingly had to give its seal of approval to the Atkins diet after all these years, after running some tests and finding a bunch of women who were on the high-protein diet and lost weight. So they say it is a viable alternative in your weight loss regime. Oh, good. All right. The astronaut was probably driven crazy by some <laughs> some lusty email she read from her rival for the affections of uh, a male astronaut who was up in the space shuttle. She got a hold of these email where the woman was talking about making love to the guy she was in love with who she had declared to his mother that she was going to leave her husband for so that she could marry. When she found out there was a girl who was rivaling her for his affection, it just drove her crazy. She jumped into a diaper, got behind the wheel of her car, and drove 900 miles to try to kidnap her. She so. got knocked out of the news totally by Anna Nicole Smith. I know, but she's she back up. because yeah. Anna Nicole is in the ground. You know, Ed McMahon put out an um, audio book. You know that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, you didn't yeah. read. <laughs> you didn't read that, Johnny. Well, I, I, I don't read what that fat fuck has to say. <laughs> yeah, listen to that. I've always hated it. One afternoon, I jacked off Lawrence Welk while Johnny beat his meat from an easy chair in his studio. Austin was coming so hard he shit in my hand. Whoa! <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, he he did an audiobook. Fascinating stories. There's nothing sacred. In April of my senior year in college, I was paying a lot of money to get a little boy named Gordon to milk my colon. <laughs> <laughs> Great stories in there, but I remember one evening when Art Linkletter but fucked a beautiful English sheepdog named Patrick. <laughs> Great, great stories in the Ed McMahon book. Why? I can't believe you didn't read this book. How's that not a bestseller? Once I asked the little boy, please start eating my penis. <laughs> Carson was willing to do just about anything for a low job from a cute young child. Oh, my God. In April of my senior year in college, I was paying a lot of money to get a little boy named Gordon to oh, milk my that, colon. Okay. All right, enough. That's where it's hearing again. Really like it's a great book. I'm not going to play you the whole book. How much would it be to get Gordon to milk his colon? I'm curious. When Johnny and I started doing The Tonight Show, we did anything we could think of to fill Doc Severinsen's tight little ass hole with Johnny's enormous nasty man meat. <laughs> Man beef. <laughs> With her feet behind her head, Raquel Welsh shit on my penis, then tried to pee in Doc Severinsen's face. Wow. <laughs> Johnny loved shitting on Lonnie Anderson. Big tits. Oh, my goodness. It's a fabulous book. It's honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're in a Pulitzer. 
At least he waited till Johnny was dead. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it's right to reveal this stuff now. Don't oh. tell the Raquel shitting on your dick story until I'm in the ground. It's a great, great book. I love the challenge of trying to hold down a little boy while Johnny stuck his tiny penis. <laughs> what a great challenge. Oh, it's an ingra- incredible book. I've read it many times. Where do you get this book? In Richard's studio. <laughs> After spraying, my face with gum, Dom DeLuise put his hand down Johnny's pants and squirted shit straight down Johnny's mouth. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Zsa Zsa Gabor has... M- Zsa Zsa Gabor has mammoth cunt lips. <laughs> No, it's really good. I remember one evening when things got completely out of control. Doc Severinsen licked my nuts while Johnny but fucked George Burns who shot his cunt all over Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet's forehead while Jerry Lewis shit ice cream on Red Skelton's crutch and then Steve Allen stuck a fire extinguisher up Jack Benny shit came while Andy Williams sniffed coke off Dom DeLuise penis that was a tough, tough night. Come on, this stuff is not true. I don't know about that. <laughs> If it's in a book, you got to relieve it. it can't he wrote it. He yeah. wrote it. It's the ugly side of Chobin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at most, it took crazy. only a couple of hours a day to gather whatever boys I needed to fondle in. But fun. <laughs> All right, Robin, is there anything else in the news? Yes, we've got to get Ed to just shut up. Uh, Ed's got a lot of great stories. You wrote that book with Larry Flynn. (laughs) There's a uh, realtor, you know, one of these high-profile realtors out in the Hamptons who is in the paper under arrest today. They said he had a bunch of kitty porn. I don't care what he has if he can get me a rental. (laughs) (laughs) Kitty porn on his computer, and uh, they can't believe it. What is his website? (laughs) He's uh, the real estate guy who uh, runs the branch of England Volkers out in the Hamptons. He was dragged shamefaced from his uh, harbor home late Monday after investigators found him posting kitty porn on the Internet chat room. Nobody knows knows you're going to get caught when they do that. I mean, what do they think of these these uh, pedophiles? A preliminary search of his computer collection of child pornography included images of boys and girls oh. engaged in bondage and sexual activity. Some of the images featured the guy himself smearing feces on himself. Oh. Is this from the Ed McMahon book? <laughs> <laughs> I smeared feces on Johnny's dick. <laughs> One time, a realtor out east got me to shit fuck my ass. Oh, <laughs> it's dangerous Police to die here. Von uh, Reddy, a German national with a single count of possessing May a the sexual bird of performance by a shit child, on your head. <laughs> but said he would likely face additional charges as things go on. He is described as a playboy, and it was difficult for people to believe hmm. that he could have been up to this stuff. The police say he has admitted to uh, being involved in this, but his pals say that uh, he's telling them that some friend who came to the house might have put this, these images on his computer. He blamed a German guest who was involved in child pornography who stayed at his house last year. Meanwhile, he was just, I think, about to marry his very beautiful and pregnant girlfriend. Oh, great. Yeah. So you invite these German friends of yours over and they're... <laughs> Imagine that's true, and they're looking at internet porn and then oh, yeah. porn, and then you get fucking in jail from that. Got him. One night, out of nowhere, a sweet, innocent choir boy gagged on my elderly nuts, and then yellow discharge erupted from my minuscule penis. <laughs> That happened out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. Wow. He's sucking on his nuts. You know, Gilbert was just telling us about his honeymoon. Yeah. It was kind of like the Ed McMahon. That sounds great. <laughs> well, here's a, a honeymoon in Salt Lake City you don't want to emulate. They say it wasn't the most romantic of honeymoons. Police say the groom is in jail, accused of trying to run over his new wife after a weekend wedding in Las Vegas. Mm. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Still honeymoon, honeymooning when he ran her over. 
<laughs> he should have uh, drove her in the fucking lane. <laughs> Police received an emergency uh, can call. Can I uh, give you a lift, uh, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Police received uh, an emergency call. Let's take the bridge. Call. It's uh, much uh, quicker that way. <laughs> On Monday, from someone I'll reporting... get you wet, <laughs> honey. <laughs> Someone reporting a couple fighting in a car as they traveled on Highland Drive, about 10 miles southeast of Salt Lake City. Jump out of the car, bitch. <laughs> well, that's what she did, Gilbert. They say she jumped out of the car. Uh, Get the uh, water running. <laughs> and started walking away when her new husband drove off the road and hit her with the car. Well, Carson that's was why willing she to wouldn't do... drown. Carson was... Carson was willing to do just about anything for a blow job from a <clears throat> cute young child. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she wasn't seriously injured. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is a horrible story. It's the more horrible than that, that last Carson story. It takes away the whole charm of the Tonight Show. Right. Blows the lid off it. A two-year-old boy who was staying, uh, he is now staying with relatives after witnessing a horrific act by his father. According to the Connecticut Post, police in Bridgeport, Connecticut, say a 21-year-old man stabbed his wife several times before handing the bloody knife to his son and telling him, now you stab mommy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Police aren't sure if the child obeyed the order. Authorities say that uh, Furman Rodriguez and his wife got into an argument after he accused her of cheating. It's your name, Furman Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez. <laughs> and what's your wife's name? Sue. <laughs> her name is Sue? Sí. <laughs> Rodriguez then allegedly picked up a kitchen knife and began slashing her in the face, chest, and arms, and legs. Now, did, did, you, did you stab her in the chest and legs? Sí. <laughs> Police say as the victim bled on the floor, Rodriguez handed the weapon to his son and demanded he join in the vicious assault. So? <laughs> and the wife was taken to a hospital where she's being treated for multiple stab wounds. It didn't even kill now, her. Now, if she gets a lawyer, what can the lawyer do? Sue. <laughs> he'll, he'll sue? He. <laughs> David Brenner liked to fuck George Goebbels' asshole <laughs> with Tommy Newsom's minuscule car. <laughs> Once I asked the little boy, please start eating my penis. <laughs> President Bush says uh, he sees some encouraging signs in uh, the it's very disturbing new policy up on the Tonight Show. in Iraq, number one. You know the work that goes into that? What? Even at this early hour. Those clips. Oh. <laughs> Even at this early hour, there's some encouraging signs. All right. He doesn't tell us what the signs are. He says he's encouraged by what's going on in Iraq. What a retard. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob Dole heard about what was going on at Walter Reed, and he said somebody made a big mistake. Somebody goofed. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Thank you. And uh, we talked about this this morning. Scooter Libby was found guilty by a jury. Yesterday, here's the ambassador, Joe Wilson, whose wife was outed during uh, that whole controversy. He says that Bush should apologize to his wife. Number three. For 34 years, I looked forward to going to the bathroom in Johnny Carson's mouth every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the ambassador. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> the president did say th today that he expressed sorrow for Mr. Libby and Mr. Libby's family. It might be helpful for the president to express some sorrow to my wife for what his people have That's done right. to her That's in compromising right. her identity as a covert CIA officer and in destroying her career. Absolutely. Now, why will Scott DePace continue to argue that something, what, nothing was done to this woman? I don't know. Yeah. Here's the ambassador again. Bush should apologize for the faulty war intelligence as well. The president might express some sorrow to the American people that a key part of the justification uh, under which we sent our soldiers to kill and to die in a foreign country in our name, a key part of that justification was simply bogus. What is it, Scott? You wanted to uh, answer Robin's question, is that it? Yeah, I don't see what is so bad that has happened to her. She was Her life was not threatened. She can work in any number of jobs. You don't know That's anything about point. it. What if your wife worked for the CIA, covert she operation? She could still work for the CIA. Somebody... She was not covert at the time. But, well, stop it. That you wasn't. That compromises, know what he's talking about. That was his wife. Why is he saying that? 
Because he hates the Republicans ah. and Bush. Oh, Obviously, on. he's you, got you know an agenda. You know that for a fact. You know he has an agenda. I mean, anybody who, who is wronged has an agenda. That is why this whole thing started in the first oh, place, because the, the reporter, I, I forget his name. It has nothing to do with the fact that the Novak. woman was outed. Novak yeah. asked, why would you send a, a guy who is not uh, how do you know into so much? the administration? Because I, I watch his stuff. How are you so brilliant? Because I watch all the stuff and I'm very And you're the director smart. on the Howard Stern Show. You should be the director of all things in America. How are you? Why aren't you working? How are you so brilliant? You just work on the radio show. I'm just telling you what's wrong and right. You don't out when you're a a United States citizen and 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 a member of the government. And someone is in covert CIA operations. You do not out them. You're not you're part of the assuming line coming that up. you're out assuming here. that there was some. Goodbye. No. Now you're, you're, you're assuming gone. that they were trying to Look hurt George this woman. I don't think eye. it was the case. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> you know they're shooting at the top of your head while you talk. Look. Look at the, look at the TV. <laughs> right, thank you. I'm surprised you were able to do that. Right? I knew you when you had a full head of hair. Hey, you big bull fuck. <laughs> go ahead now. Go back and think. <laughs> Get Try the, the fuck out! <laughs> Try. <laughs> so anyway, Louis Scooter Libby has been convicted. Here is his attorney, Ted Wells, who says that uh, Libby is totally innocent and will appeal. Number 11. All right. We are very disappointed in the verdict of the jurors. This jury deliberated for approximately 10 days. He says he intends to file a motion for a new trial and will start making plans for a formal appeal. Libby was the only person charged in the uh, three-year-old CIA leak probe. Some people are saying he is the scapegoat. That's true. Falling on the sword for the administration. Here is the special prosecutor, Patrick Fitzgerald, said he's gratified and added that uh, the facts in the case were clear. Number 10. The jury was obviously convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant uh, had lied and obstructed justice in a serious manner. The results are actually sad. It's sad that we had a situation where a high-level official, a person who worked in the office of vice president, obstructed justice and lied under oath. All right. So uh, there, Scott, I don't care what you say, (laughs) the jury thought he was guilty. Mm -hmm. An estimated 85% of adults have gambled at least once in their lifetimes. Most can do this without consequence. However, the National Council on Problem Gambling says that between 3 and 4% of gamblers nationwide have a problem. Number 12. All right. Problem gambling is a preventable and treatable disorder, and that there is hope and help, and that uh, we hope that through this week and uh, around you know, during the year, people will take the time to think about it a little bit. Is this the reason you quit? It is National Gambling Awareness Week. By the way, no, I don't know about that, but by the way, I just want to make clear, I quit illegal gambling. In other words, like in Atlantic City and Vegas, I was still gamble. Oh, oh! You didn't tell us there was a stipulation. <laughs> well, we thought you quit gambling, period. No, my problem was clearly the illegal gambling. Oh, that's right. Because that's why you met with your bookie to say goodbye. Right, you pick up a phone and it's right there, but I, I'll still, you know, I don't want to seem like a hypocrite. I will still gamble. <laughs> Are changed since this morning. No, 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 it, it never changed. I always said I, I forgot to say. It's just. Is it kind of like when you're off coke, but you'll drink into oblivion? Uh, right. Okay. All right. It's, all right. No, it's, it's very different. Illegal gambling's a problem for me. Legal gambling has never been a problem. Uh, all right, uh, Artie. It's legal to gamble with your weight loss. You can do that legally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on that. We want to see you healthy. All right, all right. <laughs> and you have a responsibility as a captain of your team. I'm just trying to say I know about this national gambling thing, but I don't want to seem like a hypocrite to you in the face. All right. Well, the, I will be legally gambling forever. When do you know if somebody has a problem with gambling? Uh, this guy says that there are some telltale behaviors. Number 13. All right, let's hear when what When they're feel. telling you their daughter gives a mean blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> If you're preoccupied with gambling, you know, thoughts of gambling, for example, are often causing you to lose sleep. If your gambling is out of control, in other words, if you're unable to set a limit and stick to it, you often gamble until your last dollar's gone. And then last, if gambling is causing harm to you or your family, are you missing days from work or bills going unpaid? Again, yeah, there is a reason they're doing this now. March Madness is insane. Yeah, yeah. that's why they declared this the week. And finally, I'm glad I'm out of it for one. Jennifer Hudson is being honored 
everywhere. So I guess she returned to her hometown of Chicago yesterday. Can't get enough for her. I hate that. <laughs> Don't you love all these people who have these incredible things happen to them? And then they say, yes, always, you know, fight for your dreams. Like most schmucks' no. dreams. <laughs> people who go around saying fight for your dreams are misleading everyone. <laughs> Derek Jeter's the worst with that. Derek Jeter has videos out going, you can do whatever you want. Sure you can. You can be whatever well, I want to be on the Yankees. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm 53. Welcome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Here's Jennifer Hudson. You can achieve your dreams. Number six. No, she can. And believe me, she ain't going to achieve another dream. She's out of the movie. <laughs> She's finished is. dreaming. You're damn right. I just wanted to bring it here for you all to see because if, it's, if you can see it, you can achieve it. I just want to fuck who Derek Jeter's fucking all day. Right. <laughs> I got to say, I, I feel so horrible for this this story. <laughs> this place that was going to get to be part of television history. You see this with the Sopranos? Oh, bl yes. Oh, I know the, I know this place, Halston's Bakery uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. and Ice Cream Shop in Bluefield. Picture the, did you read this, Howard? No. The guy was going to be, the Sopranos were going to shoot the last yeah. scene of the last fucking episode of the show at this guy's ice cream parlor in Bloomfield, New Jersey. What happened? Halston's. And the, the town council thinks banned the show is too anti-Italian. So oh, they banned it. The guy man. wants to fucking slit his wrist. You know what that would have done for business? That would have been great. Like, he he would have been, been like, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> that is Poor terrible. Bastard. I mean, yeah. I'm Italian. There's nothing offensive about the fucking show. No one thinks all Italians are the Sopranos. But how can the town ban them from coming in yeah. to oh, this, this guy's establishment. It's poor, business. Poor Anything else, guy. Robin? Here's Jennifer Hudson performing Dream Girls. She's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you and like here's, that. I adore here's the music. mayor of Chicago who tells everyone he's so proud of Jennifer. Uh, yes, I imagine he is. Number eight. I know I speak for everyone in Chicago when I said that we could not be more proud of Jennifer Hudson and all she has accomplished at such a young age. Boy, I tell you, that is a great song. Though. She was really belted. You know who else belted out? Listen to this. See if you recognize who this is. <laughs> you guess Gilbert got for you. Right? <laughs> terrific, you gotta terrific. love those great things. All right, Robin. And that's hey, Howard, Gilbert, yes, Artie. Real quick, uh, this Saturday I will be signing my DVD. <laughs> at, um, in Bo in the Boston area, at the Newberry Comics, somewhere in the Boston area. When you're signing a DVD, this Saturday. it's important to do it with a pen. <laughs> hey, can I just say something? One of the Newberry Comics. I know you have a development deal with Fox, and I think this woman on the phone has a good idea. And I want to, <laughs> real quick, what is uh, Anna, what's your idea? Say it real quick. Hi, sweetie. That Artie and uh, Sulu should have a show, like an odd couple show. Remake the odd couple with Artie and Artie George. And George. Okay, you I got like it. it. Get to work on that, Artie. George, you regularly. Huh? You into this, George? Hey, sure. All sure. right, let's do it. You especially. <laughs> it, you've got to be a part of the package. I'm not. The package. <laughs> See Gilbert uh, uh, Godfrey this Thursday night at 8 o'clock at Caroline's on Broadway, Manhattan. He'll probably be taking a sabbatical when his baby is born. And That's right. He might not be on the road much after the child That's comes. right. He doesn't want to miss a day. 212-757-4100. Congratulations again on your marriage, uh, Gilbert. Uh, it sounds like a great, oh, more great... More importantly, my DVD. <laughs> To purchase Gilbert's DVD, Dirty <laughs> Jokes, where his wife now is the executive producer, go to GilbertGodfried.com. That's GilbertGodfried.com. G-O-T-T. -T. That's right. Two T's. T-T. T-T. F-R-I-E. T-T. And...